Alright. So now we get the hint button on or the skip button. That's it, let's begin. <clears throat> Ken, do you like oolong tea? No, I like Earl Grey tea. But thank you for asking. Uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Which is... Which is boiling, or close to boiling at this point. Because I know water boils at 212. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less while I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. I'll be the judge of that. Uh, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. Okay. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking. And I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. <clears throat> when it's you who's around anyway. Ooh, I think I'm just... There's a little bit of a connection going on. Anyways, uh, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Ken. It's very endearing. Or nauseating, depending on how you look at it. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I want Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Ken, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh? Why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. It also prevents me from getting this hunch that I've been growing on my back. Uh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, I, so I do my best to manage it. With painkillers. Is that so? I wonder why that is. One word for you, sweetheart. Chiropractor. It's most likely because my... Uh... But my... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes. I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Uh, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. And anybody else's who try to steal them because they're mine. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume that the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time. Our bodies are even closer to each other. It's like we're getting closer to Yuri. You know what I mean. I can't see too well. Hmm? I, I'm sorry. The light, it blinds me. You wouldn't have to have sunglasses, would you? Yuri, are you hiding something from me? You're not a vampire, are you? Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but... When she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I don't need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. I think you've got bigger things to worry about, like spilling the hot tea on her, giving her second or third degree... Yeah, more likely second degree burns. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. And so is reality for her as well. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper, ensuring it doesn't spill on my lap so I can sue her. 
like that woman who spilled coffee on her lap at McDonald's, which was fabricated. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Just as long as Sierra isn't looking. Because she'll swoop right in and steal every single one of them from under our noses. Ah, that's... That's okay. I won't take any. I need to watch my girlish figure anyways. Eh? Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Fair enough. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think how close we're getting. My bad. No need to apologize. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any har Blech. She holds it so that I don't have any harder but time reading it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Are we reading or are we flirting? Well, in that case, Yuri's already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate. Then another. Then another. And then another. Until I ate every single one of them. Sorry, Yuri. And I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if this situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. She bites down on my fingers! And I almost lose my ring and index finger. Or rather, my index and middle finger. I hope she doesn't turn into a cannibal because of this. Or I guess she could say she got some free finger food. I'll see myself out. I apprehensively put the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um... Ken... Sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah, uh, that's... well... You're just helping. That's something that friends do. Right? I mean... not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah, that's all it was. Yeah, then... you don't need to stop or anything. I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell by just her expression that she even can't focus now. My heart is pounding. And pounding faster and faster and faster. It's all of a sudden. <clears throat> Unfortunately, Yuri doesn't know CPR. Nah. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers. But this time, Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't even... Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. She's having a panic attack! I must try to calm her down! Just breathe in, breathe out. I raise my arm. Ah. Like before, Yuri parts her lips, but it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath in my fingers. Okay, everyone. What? Uh -uh. Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. And you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. I am going somewhere else now. The spell is abruptly broken. And Monica goes back to her blueprints of the Mega Death Ray. I'll... Uh... I'll take care of the cups. Yeah? Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. Things, things went from romantic to awkward. Just like that. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Alright. Time to start reading poems. Oh my goodness! This is so good, Ken! Hey? I love it! Especially after yesterday's poem! Ugh. You're too honest sometimes, Sayori. No, but really! I want to put 
this on my wall so I can show it to my grandchildren in about 60 years from now. Can I? Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. <laughs> because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know. So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a cat poem! Awkward. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Not even gonna go there. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. I think that's just being a little too kind. I can think of a thousand words better than weird, but not gonna say them. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure if that's exactly how that works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah. There are very subtle hints in our poems. Me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Aw, you, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Just don't fry your brain cells. Yeah, right. Well, you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Me? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Does she? Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Mm-hmm. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet! Yeah! I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Weird. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. We'll see about that. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad one can help give the rain cloud a little hug. And make a nice happy rainbow with a pot of gold at the end of it and a cute little leprechaun. But unfortunately, I can never catch the little guy because he's too darn fast. And his pot of gold is gone by the time I get there. Ah, give it a rest, Sayori. Sorry, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh? It is? <clears throat> Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Ken. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Okay. <clears throat> Bottles, I pop off my scalp like the light of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. Kitties. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. What? And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottles. All in a row. Wait, did you just imply she took a kit and put it in a bottle? I think I'm overthinking this here. Anyways, let's continue. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams, friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secret hidings in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I find gold! 
I flipped us off my bottle cap. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. <clears throat> my empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door, hoping they don't steal my gold. Finally, all done. I open up and in come my friends. Didn't they come in such a hurry? Do they want my bottles that much? I practically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, pulling them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. <sighs> they were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who weren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Holy, holy Jesus. I'm not going to swear for anybody here, so forget it. Siori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. But this is just the beginning. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. Pocus, pocus. <sighs> Best poem ever. You're getting pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. <clears throat> Whoops, wrong voice. I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. And in the afterlife, I'm gonna write some more. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sierra's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. Like everybody else. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be bleh, for me to be pessimistic. Alright, Natsuki's next. Hmm. Well, I can admit that it's better than the last one. It's nice to see you're putting in some effort. That's good. But I still don't like this at all. You suck. Give up now. Never. It's trying too hard to be serious. Eh? What do you mean by that? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. It's going to just sound like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. That's what he stopped short all of a sudden. Don't tell me. Eh? You're not. You're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? What are you talking about? Keep your voice down. Everybody in a 10 mile radius can hear ya. A loud mouth. You know, Yuri would love this kind of, this angsty. Just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean, I, I mean, ugh. Looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve. Though uh, what I did is beyond me. She looks like she's ready to break my neck in several places here. I am so done with you. Natsuki shoves the poem I handed her back over to me. Take your stupid poem. If you're ready for someone else, just don't show it to me. Ouch. This is what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. If you think she was annoying as a student, I'd hate to imagine her as a wife. Honey, the dog needs to be let out again. Billy, you clean up your toys. Timothy, get off that phone. Honey, don't forget to do laundry. Ugh. I would feel very sorry for the guy who would marry Natsuki. Anyways. <clears throat> Yuri's next. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprise expression on her face. Do you like it? Ken. This one might be even better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? I'm just that good. Just yesterday, I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. 
Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. Or maybe I was just oblivious and wrote absolutely nothing out of thin air. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Uh, can we turn on the air conditioning, please? Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Interesting, but the happiness doesn't last long. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Sorry about that. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scattering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious is well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more and would have to call the city on me just because I have a raccoon running loose. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread, my hunger, curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. It decided to take residence in my, in my tree. The moon increments in its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife, the very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions into the newly satisfied animal. <clears throat> the raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten used to each other. Not a smart move. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Pavlovian <coughs> meaning conditional response. And Pavlovian refers to Pavlov. And I remember, I don't remember his first name, but he used, but what he did is he would ring a bell and the dog would salivate. Called conditional response is what it is. It's what she's referring to. I remember this from my psych course, but I don't remember the full details. Anyways. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. Yeah, it's called Not Beating Wild Animals. Twit. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that a different... Blech. Take two. I think it's something that different people can relate into the, to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Fair enough. Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because they're embarrassing and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Ken? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. 
You're so good at a lot of things. Writing, listening, feeding me chocolates, ignoring the pain that I gave your index and middle finger from biting earlier, the blood on the floor from your, from having two less fingers. There really aren't many people like you, Ken. That's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. Ah, uh, there's plenty of fish in the sea. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now, I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's, it's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Aww. Alright. Hi again, Ken. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. How are your plans for World Diamond? Er, I mean, your poem's going. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright. This one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your own style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm. I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most... romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. Or a sword. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. I've tried interrogating her. It fails. I've tried putting my nails up against the chalkboard to make her speak. That failed. What do you think I suggest I do? Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? Probably best you don't. I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that. You must be pretty into her. What? Eh? You completely misunderstood. Ah ha ha, calm down. I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one. Anyway. I've heard of people falling in love with their work, but... This is going too far. Anyways, <clears throat> Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway, no, I am not putting cameras in her bedroom. When she's not looking, I am not spying on her like some creep. You want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Uh-oh. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. Like a television or a PC monitor. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing, sign, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Hmm. The plot begins to thicken. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Ah ha ha. I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I'm kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. Sorry, I think I screwed up somewhere. <clears throat> Anyways. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, 
Here's Monica writing tip for the day. Lesson number 235. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Okay, now we're starting to get into the fourth wall territory. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? Yeah, what are you talking about? Ah ha 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 ha. That's my advice for today. Thanks for stopping by. Shutting down. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Yuri has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can get out during the event. <clears throat> okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Natsuki, you're on drums. Yuri, you're on bass. Ken, you're on vocals. And I will be on bass guitar. What about Sayori? She will be a backup bass guitarist. We're going to be performing metal at this festival. Oh, that would be awesome. Performing? Um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Darn, I was hoping for heavy metal. Anyways, each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sierra's putting them all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Hee <laughs> Sierra, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Yeah, nice invisible poster there, kiddo. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already start putting these posters up, did you? Eh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? No, it's not a bad idea. It's a horrible idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. Well, they say public speaking is everybody's number one fear. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, say Yuri. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. Excuse me. Ooh. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, I still think we could give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club and the extinction of the human race. Or, I mean, the saving of the human race. Sorry, malfunction. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will be inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, <clears throat> it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself. That just came out of nowhere. Finding new horizons and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others to inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. You will not resist. I have taken over your brain. And if that all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, and I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri, Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... 
It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. No backups? <gasps> okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I, I guess I really don't have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Hold that thought. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. It's not like you are performing in front of Madison Square Garden, where the whole world is watching. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. It is a two out of three falls match for the World Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> Sorry? I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. Hey. And no, that was Yuri slapping Monica. Just to get her back online. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to pra practice reciting them in front of each other. N -n no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Fair point. Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Ha ha ha. Of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands in front. And she stands behind the podium. Excuse me. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Siori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Yay! Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica! Ha ha ha, thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I, I'll go next. What? You're so fired up all of a sudden! Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! It's called... After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why are you suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and competent woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she in its enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. And possibly more. And confidence. Suddenly she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. That'll be 20 bucks. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught off so off guard that we must have forgotten. Has everybody zoned out while she was reading this? I mean, jeez. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. One, two, three, ding, ding, ding. Winner and new champion. Wait, wrong event. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Yuri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks up to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Sorry, I giggled. Eehee. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. Oh, brother. 
How'd you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. I imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror, or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Story begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery as like Ciari is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Ciari's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Ciari meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Ciari finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. Hehe, <laughs> even Ken liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's... Well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. Hehe. <laughs> then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay! Now who's next? Natsuki? Mm. Don't make me go before Ken! It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Ken lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Whoa! That's a low blow. That's silky. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. Yeah, one thing I noticed is that these girls are lined up from tallest to shortest. Huh. Interesting. Anyways, I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry I'm not really good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. Ouch! That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah! I'm going! Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are y'all looking at me? Do I have something stuck in my teeth? Uh, yeah, you have a little bit of spinach stuck in your teeth here. I got some dental floss. Because you're presenting. <clears throat> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. <sighs> The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say! You better not make me do that again! Ah, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier! I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. Sounds like to me Natsuki has the opposite effect. I guess she's not afraid of uh, public speaking. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that all you have an idea of what's in like right now. Whew, excuse me. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, 
I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. You might get your hair out of my face or I cut it off. Ah, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sierra or Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, Wait, I thought I was trying to impress Yuri. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? If I try to let Sayori walk home by herself, she'd probably get lost. Hee <laughs> hee. Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? Good question. It's okay, Ken. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Siori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Siori's being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Siori. Sorry, I was spacing out. I almost hit my face against that wall. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words, like everything else. So let's just say that one day, Yuri has to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? Yeah, really. That's out of nowhere. You're kind of putting me on the spot here. Eehehe. <laughs> well... Excuse me. Let's see here. Hmm. I would walk home with Yuri, I would still walk home with Sayori. Well, Yuri's more responsible. And probably doesn't need me to walk her home. Although she's although she's beautiful and uh cute and that's sort of, and cute. However, Sayori is the childhood friend. Hmm. Well, I'm just trying to think here. Hmm. How to go about saying this? I mean, like I said, I'm trying to win over Yuri, but someone's got to keep an eye on Sayori, so I think I'm just going to go with number two. Because I severely doubt if she tried to walk home by herself, she'd probably get lost. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But, but, she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez, I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. Especially considering you owe me 250 bucks from the other times I had to walk you home. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Ken. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... See, Ari, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Probably best you don't. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Siri to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy, too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Alright, round three! Let me see here. Like I said, I'm still gonna try to impress Yuri, so... Hmm. We'll start here. Alright. Nope. Okay. Nice. Alright, three in a row. Really? Hmm. Hmm. Let's see here. 
Really? Hmm. Whoops. Shoot. No, I want to impress Yuri. Not not, not you, Sayori. <clears throat> okay. Whoops. Well, like I said, Sierra would be number two. Hello, welcome to the stream. How's it going? Let's see here. Hmm. I'm doing all right. My throat's a little uh, <clears throat> my throat's a little uh, a little stressed out right now. I'm doing all these voices. Let's see here. And trying to figure out how to uh, win over uh, Yuri. Well, that's part of being a voice actor, you know? Anyways, let's see here. Let's try to think. <sighs> hmm, this one's gonna be a little bit tougher. Oh, I'll just take a shot in the dark. There we go. Alright. Um, okay, I do know Puppy and Pink are not it. Candy's not it either. Perfect. Are the intense ones? Oh. Well, anyways, I'm just gonna take it with a grain of salt. So intense, huh? Okay. Although I think with some of the words, they kind of throw you a bit of a curveball. Like you think one word is associated with one character, but when you select it, it goes with someone else. Hmm. I do know anime is not it. And then there's strawberry. Cheeks is not it. I think Pat's out also. Hmm. But like I said before, should something go awry, Ziara is the backup. I don't think Vitality is another word either. Take a shot in the dark. Shit. Okay, it's definitely not Kawaii, not Blanket. There we go. Got the last one. Ah, uh, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. I was not preparing for world domination. Ha 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 ha. You must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination. World domination, perhaps. Er, I mean, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival, too. I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. We'll see. Hey, weren't you complaining about it yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. You lazy... Good lord. If that's not the definition of lazy, I don't know what is. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound like a bit like Sierra all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? I'm doing fast and high pitch voice. Well, usually with voices, you kind of have to match the character a little bit. I mean, high and fast and high pitch works. But, I, but that's usually more for like a cheery person, though, and Natsuki's definitely not that. But, to each their own. Yeah, I always firmly believe that the voice has to match the character, otherwise it's just gonna make the character look really weak. Squid? 
I would not eat squid if he offered it to me. Fried or raw. That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on! Are you saying you don't like squid? You, of all people? Hey, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what would you mean by you, you of all people? Really, Monica? You're really that clueless? But, I digress. Because, it's right in your name. Monica. What? Hey, I'm with her on this one. That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Ah, by image. Ah, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yori's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at the desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. You're spacing out again. Uh, Sorry, you're not on drugs, are you? <laughs> Sorry. Excuse me. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything all right? Well, of course. Why wouldn't it be? That just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Geez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sarah shows me a big smile. But deep down, I don't think there's a smile there. Just saying. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Siori before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Siori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who was shuffling through some papers at her desk. Ken, what's up? The sky, that's what's up. Hey, this might sound a little strange, but... Have you noticed anything up with Siori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into a little into it a little too much, but she seems a little downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Siori, who is idly dragging a rubber razor up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind, but I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Ken. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. True. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know that it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, nope, no. Nope. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know. We're one big happy family. Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh? Are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she's just a, a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Ken. Me? How on earth would you come up to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but I've been spying on you and Sayori every single day from when you were children. Sayori talks about you more than anything else you know. Eh? She's been so much happier ever since you've joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it has than it always has been. Hehehe. <laughs> You're so funny, Ken. Have you thought that maybe you've always been seeing her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you. 
Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I am just a robot. I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. It's a little too late for that. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Uh, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it. Forget about it! But I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Ciara is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Ciara and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. <clears throat> well, I do appreciate suggestions. Yeah, I agree. I think Yuri does deserve a soft voice. Completely. And low, too, is also good. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Siri told me not to worry about her and have to have fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Fair enough. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly, I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now, it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in one next to her own. I, I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell you that you wanted to be alone in, with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell that I was thinking like that? I'm psychic. Well, it's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. And I can peer into your mental... <laughs> Let me try that again. So it wasn't hard for me to express... Bleh. Take three. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression, and I can peer into your subconscious. Weird. Not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. Fair enough. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. I'm all ears. There, I gave you my left ear. There, there's my right ear. Uh, it's really not that big of a deal. I'm just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today. And when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh? That's quite romantic. Eh? Sorry. I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that. I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Do I know the famous YouTuber Dan TDM? I can't say that I've ever heard of him. Yeah, I'm kind of limited as far as who I know and... Who I know about as far as YouTubers go. I know the Grumps. I know about Rhett and Link from Good Mythical Morning. And of course, ABGN the Nerd. And that's... Pretty much it. Anyways, Siri and I have just been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, I see. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. Cat, the world is full of meaning, off, hidden deep beneath plain sight. I'll see. Oh, interesting. Well, hmm. Huh. Well, you can give him my congrats on becoming a soon-to-be father. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah. So you think that there might be something behind it after all? Hmm. I think that Ciara is a very complex person. Was not everyone? Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today, too. And I also feel some concern for her. 
But in your case, it looks like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? That's a weird way to put it. Well, I guess that was the case. Sayori. She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Ah, uh, I guess. But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Not like we're getting married or anything. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Maybe she was searching... She better not be searching through my nose for, uh, gold. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. That is... I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I prefer debit, thank you. I'm a pretty simple guy, so I think it's pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Ah, uh, that's not a compliment, is it? No, it's an insult. It is what it is. Anyways, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyways. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Is it? Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me, while her green eyes pierces through my head. As if she was to blow my brains out with her deadly laser eyes. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Alright, just like before, Sayori's first. Hmm, it's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. Don't assume things to Siori unless you have facts. Hey, I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Especially concerning the fact that you dragged me into this club. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Ken. Sayori, is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. Hee hee hee. Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. Not a mother. You're a student. If you insist. Yay! I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori. Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Alright, Natsuki's next. Yeah, no thanks. Hey, you didn't even. Next! Well, that was unexpected. Ken, your writing has only improved in these last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me. But I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. Is that so? <clears throat> Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling. I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something and you've never even shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well, Yuri smiles sadly. Ken, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? 
it's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. I probably bet you, you have the entire Chronicles of Narnia. And Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, just to name a few. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. Or people you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who would discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day. Boy, this girl's... You know, and those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And, and they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Ken. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. Then what are you doing in a literature club, then? That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to socialize. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. All right, let me just stop here for a second. And yeah, that's a real big problem we have in today's society where if you don't do one thing one way, people are going to frown upon you for that. And that is just sad. I mean, people need to be a lot more open-minded. Anyways... I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings, and all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you that I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. That's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Ken. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things, but every time, you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so weird that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others, but that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. Exclamation point. If people have a problem with someone, then don't bother wasting their time. That's all I gotta say. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would say I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? Um, if you put it that way, yeah. We really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands. But this time she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your poem? Or, excuse me, do you want me to show your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. All right, part two. Go some to the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing in the distance, a blue-green light flickers. A lone figure crosses its path, a silhouette obstructing the eerie glow. My heart pounds. The silhouette grows closer, closer. I open my umbrella, casting a shadow to shield me from visibility. But I am too late. He steps into the sheet, into the street light. I gasp and drop my umbrella. The light flickers. My heart pounds. He raises his arm. Time stops. The only indication of movement is the amber light flickering against his outstretched arm. The flickering light is in rhythm with the pounding of my heart. Teasing me for succumbing to this forbidden emotion. Have you heard of a ghost feeling warmth before? Giving up on understanding, I laugh. Understanding is overrated. I touched his hand. The flickering stops. Ghosts are blue-green. My heart is amber. Finishing the poem, I started to hand back to Yuri. But instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Do you dislike it? Uh, no, of course not. I just don't really know how I should respond. Despite Yuri's poems usually being cryptic, it wasn't hard to figure out what this one was about. I, I don't know if I'll be able to explain this one. 
That's fine. I understand this one. Yuri's having an even harder time speaking than usual. Does this one mean a lot to you? Yuri nods. I'm not really good with words, but I'm happy that you shared it with me. So, thank you. And I hope we keep spending time together. I smell romance! Despite my inability to make eye contact, I see a faint smile emerge on Yuri's lips. I once again try to hand the poem back to her. But instead, Yuri gently takes my hand and pushes him back towards me. I hesitate in response to her warm touch. You can... Um... The poem is... Once again, Yuri fails to form a complete sentence. You mean I can keep it? Yuri nods. I'd love to. Again, Yuri faintly smiles, as if she doesn't want me to notice. You always... You always make me feel nice. I know I'm not good with people, but... I hope that I can return the favor sometimes. Yeah. Don't worry. I think you do a good job. Yuri finally turns back towards me. I guess... We should move on before Monica says something. But I'm sure we can talk again later. Yeah, I'm sure we will. With that, Yuri timidly smiles at me, and I return to my seat so I can put her poem away. Alright, Monica's is last. Hi, Ken. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people? I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure, but whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. Ah ha 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 ha. Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Your style's gotten so refined, Ken. Yuri's been teaching you a lot of things, hasn't she? Well, I guess so. Yeah, I've been noticing how much time you spend with her. I think I've heard her say more words these past couple days than she talked in the whole year. Not sure how you did it, but that's pretty impressive. Well, she just needs some patience and a way to talk about all the things in her head, I guess. I'm still getting the hang of it myself. Hmm. You're certainly putting in a lot of effort. You must really like her. Eh? That's... Ah ha ha. It's awfully suspicious, you know. Spending time with her in the club room every day. Reading that edgy novel with her. Well, I just feel bad that she has a hard time socializing. It makes me want to make sure she doesn't spend all her time alone. That's a little awkward. Besides, the novel isn't too bad either, you know. Alright, alright. I get you. Just be careful, alright? I know that Yuri isn't used to opening herself up. So if something bad happens while she's vulnerable, then it can be really hard for her. Her books aren't a total escape from reality. They're just a bandage. You say that like I'm going to hurt her. Sorry, I didn't really mean that. If anything, she might accidentally hurt herself. Ooh. Bit of foreshadowing. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Er, alright. The Lady Who Knows Everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am. A feather. Lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day, I search. I search with little hope. Knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, Legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the... What did that say? Twilight sky. Toilet. Ugh. Easy for me to say. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall, and fall, and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, I dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Excuse me. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose. And we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. You know, 
I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sort of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical for anything, but it was kind of an, on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. Anyway, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we all had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Ahaha, uh -huh. are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional. Ah, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip for the day. Lesson number 390. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid that it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get to a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good, or okay, or bad, They'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Shutting down. <sighs> okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second! Is it just me? Or did you just say something strange just now? Hey, uh oh, I think we're starting to catch on. Something so did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez, why is it the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Ooh. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Okay, now we're starting to get into the good stuff. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Siori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. <sighs> or rather, uh, Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on! Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's all right. Seriously? All the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? Well, excuse me, Natsuki. So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Oh. That curious expression coming from Yori. Of all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier, and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing! That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes but we might need a lot of them, and different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted! And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Wait. Program loading. Program loaded. Yuri, you can... Uh, um... System malfunction. Shutting down. Reboot. Huh? Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. N no that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Now Natsuki's pouting too. Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Siori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. That's really beginning to thicken. Ah, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. 
So, Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know. So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Ken. The one who is truly useless. Ha 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 ha, don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tests to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would be really appreciative of that. Uh, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Uh, I, I suppose I wouldn't mind a little bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice. You shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Oh, that's what I was planning to do. Just sit on my butt and stare at the wall and watch paint dry. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Ken may not be... Ken may not like to be around you if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that! How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Ken to... Whoa, censored! What are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to get Ken to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know. And for good reason. So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said! I, I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez! Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Ken, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. <clears throat> Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. Hmm. Tough decision making here. Hmm. Well, I am very curious about what Ciari's going on. And I'm trying to impress uh, Yuri, and I really don't care for Natsuki. But Monica, there's just something about Monica that just seems wrong. So, I think it's gonna go, well. You know what? I think I'm just gonna stop it here. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna leave it here for now, um, and I'm also gonna stop the stream here because my throat is a little, uh, <coughs> sore, so thanks everybody for watching, I will see you all next time.